Welcome to Sound and Fury. I am Eric Wilfred Watson, and I don't know how to use magic. <laughs> and I'm Hugh Frank, and I'm burning through the sky. 200 degrees. That's why they call me Mr. Fahrenheit. I am a DC Comics fan, have been my entire life. I know Marvel exists, and I've watched a shitload of Marvel stuff. Still like to read DC Comics more, but the Marvel movies are a thing, and I've been watching them in order. Went all the way back and watched Iron Man, because I watched them in release order, not yes. chronological order. The way God intended. And by God, you mean Kevin Feige? Yes. yes. And uh, <laughs> just got through with Doctor Strange. Now, I saw Doctor Strange before. This isn't my first time viewing it. You just have to say it like, Doctor Strange! <laughs> No, you don't. Okay. So I watched it for the first time. A lot, like a lot, like so many of these Marvel movies, I watched it for the first time since the theater on Disney Plus. And let's let's talk about it. Let's do it. Shall we begin? I think of Doctor Strange every time I add honey to my tea. Just tea. A little bit of honey. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I've seen it like a zillion times, and it's it's one of my favorites, too. So, so, Doctor Strange is probably Marvel's best-known magic user, so of course it makes me think of DC Comics' best-known magic user, which would be Constantine. Oh, Cool. Not to be confused kind with... Kind makes me want to go watch Constantine now. That's one I missed. Yeah, don't... Well, the Keanu Reeves movie's terrible. Oh, is it? Oh, well, Keanu Reeves is awesome. He is, but Constantine is a cigarette-smoking, sarcastic Englishman warlock, and in the movie, it's an American guy from L.A. Gotcha. Oh, okay. And is Keanu Reeves. It, you know, they modeled the character of Constantine after Sting, just the physical appearance, and then they cast Keanu Reeves. <laughs> you know, it, it, okay, sure, whatever. But um, there's a lot of things on the internet about who would win in a fight, Constantine or Doctor Strange. It's very much like Enterprise versus a Star Destroyer nerd stuff. But, mm. but Constantine it, versus Istanbul? <laughs> Constantinople. Istanbul, Constantinople. But no, I like the movie quite a bit. Um, the opener was great. I like when they give you information without exposition. That's a really good yes. hallmark of well thought out storytelling and just the simple thing where he's performing the surgery where they got the music on and they're doing music trivia. <laughs> yeah. Well, Feel So Good may have charted in 1978. The album was released in December of 1977. No, no Wikipedia says it's a Check 19- again. Yes. And he's correcting the trivia. Yes, because yeah, because it's like, oh yeah, well it did it did was released in 1978, but it didn't chart until 1979. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, I mean just it's stuff like that. And that sets it up for later, where he can learn all the spells just because he's a brilliant person, remembers every fact that is ex- remembers every single fact that he's exposed to, like data mm-hmm. from Star Trek. Thanks. <laughs> Where do you store all this useless information? Useless. The man charted a top ten hit with a fugal horn. I do like the concept of a man of science, math, books, you know, biology, facts, things that are tangible, right, is uh, kind of a selfish prick, is forced to be, at the end of the movie, absolutely the opposite of all of those things in every single way. The only thing that's consistent is that he remains brilliant intellectually the whole time, but shatters his worldview, shatters his worldview. And shatters his view of himself as a person. And, and it's even visually shattering, just the, the, yeah. the effects or whatever. An excellent CGI. Now, it reminds me a lot of Inception. Yes. The buildings flipping over yes. each other and impossibilities on screen. Yes. You could not have made this movie 15 years ago, before, or earlier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's... it's the CGI has yeah. gotten to the point where, even if you can tell it's CGI, it's still it's pretty damn amazing. Yeah. I remember when people were freaking out about the, the water blob in the abyss. It was like being one of the oh. most amazing things ever to be put on, right. on film. Right, and now it's like, wow, that yeah. looks like yeah. something that yeah. was uh, uh, rendered on a Commodore 64. Yeah. A, a fifth grader could have done that with their PC, right. you know. Right, yeah, yeah. put that technology for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I think Doctor Strange, we can both probably agree, has the best cape in all of comic books. <laughs> yes. I, I guess it's technically a cloak, but yes. still. Yes, yes. And it has a name, which I don't remember right He's now, looking but... in the mirror, and then the little sleeve kind of like, stop. <laughs> and, it's just... and it's like a doting mother. It has its own personality. It's like, yeah, it's, it's it good does. stuff. It does. And and being able to put a personality into an, in an, in a semi-inanimate object, um, not completely inanimate, but giving it a personality and without having any dialogue and, and kind of understanding its motivations, like mm-hmm. the way they do it, um, it is absolutely brilliant. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I like the cloak. It's... Reminds me of the episode of Star Trek. Of course it does. Um, <laughs> who, who's the villain, the space monster thing, Dumagababu or Dormalagalu or... Dormammu? Yeah, that. Um... Dormammu! Dormammu, I've come to bargain. You've come to die. Dormammu, Dormammu, Dormammu. I'm Dormammu. here to negotiate. Die. I'm here to negotiate. <laughs> die. Dormammu. Yeah, he says it like. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. You've come to die. Yeah, so, I, I always think it's so close to Joe Mama. It's like <laughs> Joe Mama, Joe Mama, Joe Mama, Joe Mama. So, Doctor Strange gets killed in all kinds of different interesting ways over and over again. And that's gets time killed loop. in nasty ways. Start in Star Trek Discovery. Uh, Harry Mudd goes on the Discovery, and he kills the captain over and over in a time loop. And that's like the comedy of the episode, is that he's killing them in all these graphic ways over and over and over again. I remember that one. Because mm-hmm. that, that, that's um, Dwight from yep. The Office. 53, but who's counting? And it never gets old. Yeah, Wong's a fun it. character. Oh, yeah. Wong. It's fun to see him show up in other Marvel things. But I like Try this me, movie also thing. because... Even though it's part of the wider Marvel Universe, obviously. We're about to get the sequel in a couple of weeks. Mm. The if, if, if this movie stood as its own thing and wasn't part of a cinematic universe, you could still just watch it for it and enjoy it for what it is, all by itself. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It is pretty self-contained. I mean, the only, the only indication you get that it's part of the greater universe is uh, when Thor shows up in the post credit scene or whatever, in the mid credit scene, but uh, otherwise... Give some beer. Yeah, yeah, I, I would like that mug. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty cool mug. I don't drink tea. Well, what do you drink? Not tea. <laughs> I, think they, I think they underutilize his name. Like, I think they do it perfectly. It's like, uh, Mr. <laughs> Doctor. Okay, Mr. Doctor, it's strange. Well, of course it is, but who am I to judge? <laughs> I roger, Roger, what's your vector, Victor? Exactly, it was just like that. It was just like that. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was cool. Yeah, and they had a Bond villain in there. That was the that was the main bad guy. He was the mm-hmm. bleeding eye dude from James Bond. He was also mm-hmm. Galen Erso. Um, I can't remember his name right now, but he, apparently he's a Harry Potter villain now too. Like he's a fucking villain and everything. So yeah, yeah there's, there's emotional stuff um, when the. Inf- or what the not the infinite one the ancient one. Oh yeah like the living the last few seconds of your life sequence was pretty interesting yeah. the cgi that was interesting too it was just a very still slowly moving helicopter outside yeah. and stuff like that. trying to draw out that last moment mm-hmm. to last an eternity yeah knocking you out of your own body and there's some very acid trip stuff in the movie but it's just it's fun well, to watch first to psilocybin too which is i believe the mm-hmm. hallucinogenic ingredient in mushrooms I would not know. Because he says, what, do you, what did you put in this tea? Psilocybin? You know, anyway, she's yeah. just honey. Anyway, that's the, that's the scene I think of when I'm making tea. Maybe and that's why Thor would rather have beer. Yes. Yes. I really don't have much to say about Doctor Strange, other than Benedict Cumberbun, um, Benedict <laughs> Yappersnatch, um, Benadryl, Cumber... <laughs> Flo- beware of the Bandersnatch. No, beware of the Jabberwocky. Yes. He's great. So, yeah, Bangalore Jabberwocky. Touch Rust Rod. Reef blast body. Big McLarge huge. <laughs> Smoke man muscle. Eat punch beef. He is he, uh you know when they when they made the movie, did you know they actually delayed the the filming and the and subsequently the release and all that just so they could have Bangor Gore shingle flops? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not hard, but it's fun to get wrong on purpose. <laughs> exactly. But they but they said, you know, there's only one person to play Doctor Strange. Uh, and they reached out to Benedict Cumberbatch, and and they to Engelbert Humperdinck, and, they, and he said they had to con really, him into the movie. They had to con him into the movie, and he said I'd really like to, but I can't for like eight months. And they're like, okay, well we'll just delay the movie for eight months. Shall we begin? 
Okay. I love that he went into a comic book store to buy a Doctor Strange comic dressed in the full Doctor Strange costume. That's cool. It's a real thing that happened. That's awesome. And he has, he has fun with the role. I watched, just stumbled across YouTube, the, have you seen the Zach Galifianakis Between Two Ferns thing? Oh, I've heard of it. The, uh, they interview, it's like intentionally bad interviews, and he's intentionally insulting to the people. They're obviously in on the joke, or they wouldn't go on the show. But he... Uh, he insults the shit out of Benedict Cumberbatch to the point where he walks off, but it's all good stuff. Okay. It has nothing to do with anything. But. No. Benedict Cam- Benefit Lumberjacks. J- uh, Bit- uh, Cumberdi- One of the things I liked about Benedict Cumberbatch... Um, he's a smooth character. I mean, he's he just seems like a person that would be just interesting to talk to about anything. He, yeah. And he's got one of those voices along with... Morgan Freeman, Patrick Stewart, and a few other actors. He's just one of those people with a voice that you can listen to. Yeah, yeah. Not quite a Morgan Freeman, but... Um, too British. But, but one of the stories that I read about, there was, um, you know, they have this fan casting, right? So the new Ahsoka movie or new Ahsoka show is coming out on Disney+. Plus, and and these, they're, they're fan casting Benedict Cumberbatch to be Grand Admiral Thrawn, who is blue. And somebody asked him, would you want to be Grand Admiral Thrawn? And he said, no, it's too much makeup. And they're like, oh. And he said, I don't want to spend that much time away from my family. Hmm. And that's like, all right, Benedict, that's cool. You know, I, I get that. Because that's an extra, like, eight hours in the chair every day. Well, not eight hours. I think I'm exaggerating. But it's an extra, like, three, four hours in the chair. So something that's an eight-hour day for somebody else is a 12-hour day for you. Um, I heard Michael Dorn complain about the makeup for Worf, that he had to sit in the chair for hours and then oh, yeah. and do this whole work day that everybody else does then have to sit longer to get it all taken off yep. same thing with the actor that played quark and all those guys on star trek yep. have to put shit on their head every day yep. I, I, yeah I would. no so it, it's you know it's not like it's hurting for money either i mean right right i mean he would he'd be a great grand admiral thrawn but i would i totally 100 mm-hmm. percent understand his motivation for not wanting to do it and it has mm-hmm. nothing to do with money or prestige or whatever he just mm-hmm. uh doesn't want to spend that much time away from his family. The reason I brought up the Zach Galifianakis between two ferns thing is one of the questions he asks us, like talks about his acting background, and then now you're Doctor Strange. So, so what does it feel like to sell out? And <laughs> <laughs> you got your start doing theater and in independent films. I did. And now you're acting in Marvel movies. How good does it feel to sell out? <laughs> Doctor Strange's answer is that I don't think I have. It's an excellent role. I, I don't think it's a sell out. I think they're pretty cool films there's a lot for an actor to do in them so you wear a cape no i wear a cloak and i think he's right even if it's of course what is he going to say you know yeah give yeah. me buckets of money i'm going to trash talk the movie no right, right um but it really does i think as an actor i mean i don't know shit about acting but i would think acting. That, acting. i would think that it's a really interesting role you play a magician who has all these powers and there's actual drama your multiple movies interesting things to do with right. the role i would think it's an actor's dream to get a part like that yeah, and and I would say so too. It, it, and really, a lot of it's about what do you what do you bring to the character that? Mm-hmm. How do you make it yours, and how do you make it? You know, how do you make somebody with supernatural abilities a believable character? And the the way to do that is by making him human. Um, and so we, the audience, learn with him when he goes into the craziness. Yeah, yeah, and and there's just there's just stuff. You don't even add lip stuff. The whole "Try Me" Beyonce line that was that was better than Cumberland Batch. That was not in the. In the let's see, I a, a lick a look, flicker planch. Um, but anyway, that, that that was not in the original script. So he he's in so many of the Marvel actors just get into their roles and just start ad libbing mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, one of the reasons I'm so excited about the next one and the next Thor movie because apparently Taika Waititi really encourages that. But that's another video for another day. Yes, it is. Yes. Which reminds me, you should subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you do not miss any more riveting content by these completely unscripted and not thought out at all videos that we record from time to time. Yes, because I don't think about nothing. Which is strange. (laughs) It is. Doctor, 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 doctor. I really like the movie. Yeah, um, we, we joked in the... <laughs> we should just cut the video on just to that. I really like the movie. Yeah, me too. Well, I'm not going to. Okay. So, <laughs> well, we, we talked about in, the, in one of our other movies that like 75% of Marvel movies are in the top half of Marvel movies. Yes. I would say this definitely fits up there with it does. that 75% it that does. are the top 50. It definitely does. Oh. And it is, it is very firmly wedged into the category of 
faith that Marvel was going to make a good movie because I thought the whole idea of Doctor Strange was stupid prior to going to see the movie. And I went to see it with the faith that, you know what, Kevin Feige has not steered me wrong yet. Because the Eternals wasn't out yet? Except for Thor suit. Yeah, and Eternals. But um, they haven't steered me wrong yet, so this is bound to be good. Yeah, and that's, that's uh, Eternals is like the one that... A uh, conversation we'll have in the future. Yes. I'm watching every Marvel movie in order, and the Eternals is one of them. Is it, though? Is it really? We'll talk about that soon. Or maybe we won't. Fuck it, I don't care. If you didn't have an accent, do you think people would be able to tell that you're not a very good actor? 